Welcome, my dear students, to another class with me, your tutor, Atinyo Sekose, and this is a Dodashan radio tutoring from the Directorate of School Education, Nagaland. Now, today's class is based on our textbook that is multi-skill course English NBSE syllabus, class nine, and our topic is the Bishop's Candlesticks by Norman Mackinnell. You will find it on page 182. Page 182. So while you are locating your page, let me first of all give you some few instruction. Since our topic is quick lengthy, what we are going to do is we are going to go a little bit fast and of course we are also going to explore a few things about reading and how to write your answers and so on. So I hope you would find these tips um, useful. So for many of us in class nine, drama is being introduced to us for the first time. And in order to understand it and enjoy it, we need to understand what is a drama first. So what is a drama? A drama is a play, which means it's the same thing, drama and play, interchangeable. A play for theater, radio, or television. The origin of the word drama is from the Greek word that is dren, which means do or act. Do or act. So in other words, it means that we are supposed to enact it. We are supposed to play it out. And as you can see now in your text, you will find that uh, it is slightly different from the other uh, kinds of writing. In fact, you will find that it is a record of um, dialogues, conversation people talking to each other. So that is what we are going to uh, look at today. Now, uh, let me put across that our entire life is actually a drama. We fear what is new to us, so I hope we will be able to overcome that uh, very soon after we go through this lesson. Now we fear what we do not understand, but I'm telling you, do not be afraid of this drama section because it is equivalent to those of poetry and prose. Now, um, let me give you an, an example. When you wake up in the morning, you go and have your breakfast, you talk to your parents, or you talk to your friends, and so on, that itself is a drama, you know? Um, see, so you, there is action, there is talking. So it's as simple as that. So no need to be afraid of this. And now, some of you might feel that even if I read, I do not understand, you know? That it can be one of the trouble with us. So now, let me tell you that when you read it, make sure that you read it to enjoy it first, all right? No need to uh, stress yourself so much on, oh, this is a new word I do not understand, and so on. No need to do that, but read it to enjoy it. Then later on, those new words, you can mark it and you can figure it out later. But the best trick is, what you have to do is try to understand the new words in the context of the sentences. So that's how you should go about with your reading. Now, I hope that uh, you find that useful. Let's take a little background check on our topic here, that is the Bishop's Candlesticks. Now, this is a play, in other words, a drama, written by Norman Mackinnell, but you will find that the original work is actually a French novel, which is La Miserable by Victor Hugo. So, Norman Mackinnell has converted this novel into a very short um, play. So this is a very short play, a modern play, which is one act play. Modern plays are always one act with um, different scenes. And if you want, you can also look it up in the internet and you will find that there are a whole lot of interesting materials. For instance, let me suggest that you go for NCERT, that is National Council of Research and Training. You refer that material, you will find a summary and new words, so you will be, uh, it will be helpful for you. And you can also uh, check out some movies, but please do that later on. Now, how can we understand a play better? First of all, we need to take a look at what is scene. We need to understand what is a scene. A scene is the stage, 
place or location. This, in fact, is a stage. This itself is a scene, and you are the audience. So that is what we are looking at. When you are reading it, uh, you, the reader, is the audience. So, and uh, the setting here, in that your textbook, you will find that there are some scene direction. Maybe you are wondering what it stands for. So here are um, the letter R, the letter L and so on, you find that those are scene direction. So R stands for right on the stage, all right? And left, L, then C, L, center, left, and so on. So now, when you get those directions, this is what you, I need you to do. Try to draw the stage, all right? Using these directions, follow it. Uh, there you will also find how the stage is being set up, the scene, in other words. So the scene took place in the bishop's kitchen, and we find that it is uh, substantially furnished, which means only the basic essential things are being uh, found in the that kitchen. So uh, you, you have the crucifix, you have the table, you have uh, the expensive item, the only expensive item that is the candlesticks. So those things you can draw it, uh, where it is being placed, you know, follow the direction. That would give you the idea of the scene. Perhaps you can do that later on. So now, um, let's take a look at the next thing you need to know is character. What is a character? All right? So. A character is a fictitious person, which means it is not real, which means they are only actors. So how many actors or characters do we have in our play? We have only five characters there with only four. In fact, if we have to be precise, there are only two major roles uh, characters there. So the first one is the bishop. The bishop is a person of higher authority in the Catholic Church. And uh, it can be, we can say that it is equivalent to a pastor in a, a church, all right? Now, uh, the next thing we have here is Persom, who, is, who played the role of the bishop's sister, all right? And we have the next character, that is Murray, who is the servant. And the next is... Um, of course, the convict, the convict, a convict means a person who had escaped from prison, all right, who is running away after committing a crime. So we have the convict, and the last, that is the sergeant of gendarmes. So those are the police, uh, police in French, all right? Now, um, let's take a look at plot. Next thing you need to understand is plot. For this, you need to turn to page 154, page 154. So a plot is a literary term to describe the actions or events, all right? Describe the actions or events in the story, or in our case, we can say play or drama. Now, you, I'm sure you will now be able to locate that there is a diagram there. So you, all you have to do is look at the diagram and follow to this um, uh, follow to this lecture, all right? No need to read your text, but look at the diagram. So you will find a triangle. So in that triangle, this is our plot, all right? And along with this plot, I am going to give you the summary of the drama here. So uh, to save time, I'll just give uh, you abbreviated words here. From the uh, left-hand side, all right, left-hand side angle, you can write exposition, or you uh, no need to write, in fact, you have your text there, so exposition there. What does exposition mean? I will explain it as we go along. Now, next here is you have the rising action, all right? And on the tip of the triangle, you have the climax. Then you have the falling action. And finally, here on the right-hand side of the angle or triangle here, you can say this here is resolution, all right? So a story always follows this kind of a plot. So even our drama is a story, so it has this plot, okay? So um, that is taken from our story section, story writing section, so use this as a tip how to go about with your writing. So in order to save time, I won't be telling you uh, this story, we all know that, but let's come to our play here. So now, um, in the exposition part here, exposition, 
the characters are being introduced. Characters such as the bishop, as you can see in your text, the bishop, the convict, Mary, and so on, all the five characters. And it opens in the kitchen, uh, that is kitchen scene. And what happened? The bishop is ready to go to sleep, and we learn that the convict, a complete stranger, arrives at his place and threaten him to give him food. So those are the events, actions. Characters been introduced and the events unfolding. Then what happened? The bishop showed him kindness, rising action here, all right? Rising action. The bishop showed him kindness, but what happened? Uh, the convict did not change his mind. He decided to steal the silver candlesticks and that's when he ran away with that. Now, we are wondering, what is this poor fellow doing? He has been shown great kindness by the bishop, but why is he not showing that back? We are questioning in our mind. And again, we learned another event is that he was caught by the police. Now, we are wondering here, is, is he going to go back to the prison for another 10 years? That would be very troublesome for him. So when the readers or the audience are at the highest level of suspense, that is climax, all right? That is climax. Then comes the falling action. Falling action follows the sequence of events where the problems get solved. How did it get solved here? Now, the convict, was caught by the police, brought back to the bishop, but the bishop said that, no, he's my friend, and I have given the candlesticks to him, so the problem gets solved. However, we still don't know what is going to happen to the convict. So now, we also learned that the bishop has showed him a secret path where he can escape the police and start a brand new life his problem solved. He need no longer be a thief. He need no longer steal food for his daily life. So the problem gets solved. That's when we find the resolution. So that is our plot of the drama. That is our summary, short summary. But you have to read it, all right? Now, the next thing that we have to look at is the character sketch or outline. In your questions, you sometimes you are being asked about give a character sketch or give an outline, which means use words to describe the character, all right? Do not literally draw the character, okay? Draw the character or give a character sketch means um, you have to use words to describe the character, the personalities. So how can we write a good answer to that kind of a question? Here is the tip. You may want to write it down. Use adjectives, all right? Describing words. Use adjectives. And then later on, you find examples in your text that support that adjectives. For instance, the bishop. Let's take a look at the character of the bishop. Now, the bishop is a very kind, considerate person. Let's say you use that adjective. How are you going to prove that he is a kind, considerate person? He showed a stranger, he gave stranger food, shelter. You can point it out in that way. Or you can also say that he, he kept his doors and windows open for all these 30 years so that any stranger can enter his home. He go and visit the sick people and so on. As you read, you will be able to pick it out. So I won't be giving you a lot of examples. Now, uh, another example that you can point out, which is a very good example, is on a cold night when nobody dared to go out, he, without his supper, he go and visit sick people. See, all these kind of examples you can use to support your answers, all right? And in fact, a uh, person that is his sister complains that um, the bishop is selling all kinds of items in his home and the salt cellars, which was one great uh, possession, a salt cellar is a small container where you put your salt to add to your food. So a salt cellar, which is made of silver, was also being sold. And towards the end, we also learned that he has even given away the last expensive item, that is the silver candlesticks. So see, those kind of examples you need to give. Please, uh, you can also say that um, he has a, the, conf sorry, the bishop has a very good listening ear. Now, somebody who is kind does not only give away things, items, all right? Who listens, a person who listens. So the bishop is that kind of a person. He asked the convict, tell me what happened in prison, you know? So those examples you need to point it out. And um, 
He also has great empathy. Empathy means to be able to understand someone, all right, a different person from that person's point of view. So he understood that the convict had struggled a lot, that the convict has been mistreated a lot. So he has that compassion for the convict. So now you have to point out those things in that manner. Then you can also say very helpful. He gave away things, he goes and visits sick people and so on. So use adjectives and substantiate it or support it with examples in your text. He is also a very simple person who thinks good of everyone. You know, when uh, uh, when person said that, next thing, I, next thing you know, you might even be selling the silver candlesticks, he said, oh, that's very kind of you, sister. You know, see, he is thinking of selling that to help other people. So he's always having that, um, th that feeling for other people. He is also a very innocent and pure-hearted person. As Persumi put it out, you are incorrigible, you are hopeless, you know, uh, because he is being taken advantage of by other people for his kindness. That's what Persum also pointed out. Okay, he's also very calm and collected. You know, in the beginning, in the beginning, you will find that in the scene where the convict enter and threaten him with a knife, he said, my friend, why don't you sit down? You must be tired and all those things, you know. He, he did not jump out of his seat, so, but he's very calm. Now the next character that is the convict, here are some um, description or character sketch of the convict. The convict is a prisoner, a prisoner who had escaped from the sheep hulk. A sheep hulk is back in those days where um, prisoners are kept in a ship, all right, far away from other uh, people. So he escaped from there and we learned from the story that was narrated to the bishop, we learned that normally he, um, he in fact, he lived a very normal life, all right? In the beginning, he lived a very normal life, but what happened? Now, the next point that you need to note down is that uh, he, he is a victim of circumstances, a victim of circumstances. Earlier, he had a very normal life. He has a family and so on. He has a garden and so on, he, as uh, he pointed out. However, he became a victim of circumstances. How can we say that he become a victim of circumstances? In your question, you will find that uh, justified. So let me point out very quickly that whether you agree or disagree, you will find that um, both are correct, all right? There is no right or wrong answer. It depends on how you want to justify it, all right? So use examples, substantiate it, support it with your exa uh, examples when you say, yes, he's a victim of circumstance. No, he's not a victim of circumstance, all right? Prove it, in other words. So now, what is his circumstance? It was a bad year, which means he had no luck. All right, whatever he does, he was not able to uh, get anything done. Now, what happened is that his wife was ill, all right, they had no food, nobody is willing to give him job, even if he wishes to. So naturally, he was compelled to steal food. And what happened when he stole food? He was caught by the policeman, imprisoned for 10 years for stealing food. So see, that is, the circumstance of the convict. And what happened in the prison? What happened is that he was chained like an animal, bitten up like anything, and given unclean food to eat. He was covered with uh, worms and vermins, all right? And so that was his condition. And when he complained, he was given another good, good threshing. So that was his circumstance. So that way, you will find that he is a victim of circumstance. So in that way, he was reduced to a status of an animal. He, will, he started to behave like an animal, as you can see from the drama in the opening scene. Even when he was eating um, his dinner, uh, you will find that he was throwing the bones out like that, you know, and using a lot of inappropriate words such as damn, devil, and so on. So he become very inhuman, all right? Now, he, we also learned that he had, write this down, 
lost his faith in religion, or we can say lost his faith in God. He pointed out to the bishop that uh, he had lost his faith in religion, that he does not wish to be converted, all right? And initially, he refused to be converted, as we learned. But towards the end, we find that he was a transformed person, a changed person, and that happened because of the kindness of the bishop. We would be discussing that later on. The next point, Persom. Now, how will we describe Persom? Persom is the sister of the bishop. She, the first point, she's very materialistic. All right. How can we say that she's very materialistic? She's very materialistic because uh, remember the scene where the great salt cellar scene, you will find that she was weeping like anything when she learned that it was sold. All right. And you will also find that she's also very inconsiderate. So the adjective here is inconsiderate. Unlike the bishop, the bishop was willing to give uh, give away his comforter, which means the muffler, to Mary as she was going out in the in a very cold night. But um, Persom refused, saying that she is young, she is strong, she does not need that comforter. You know, so she is very inconsiderate, and we find that she has love only for her immediate neighbors or love only for her brother. Beyond that, she did not show any other love, all right? So we can say that she's very inconsiderate as well as selfish. Uh, you will also find that she's a very nagging person. You know, I really like the kitchen scene where uh, they, they discuss about the soup being boiled, all right? Uh, she's a very nagging person, which means she scolds a lot. She scolds unnecessarily. She told Marie not to chatter, but she herself chatters a lot. So that is the kind of character that we find here. However, you will also find that um, Persom is a very practical person, all right? A very practical person which uh, here, I'm going to state the example here. She pointed out that people take advantage of the bishop's kindness, all right? So that's why, see, the bishop is trying to help so many needy people and even uh, skipping his dinner, going out and visiting, even on a very cold day and so on. So uh, she pointed out that the brother or the bishop needs to take care of himself first, all right? So that's how we can also say that she's also very practical. The next character we have here is Mari. Now, Mari plays the role of the servant, all right? And she comes from a very poor family, as we learned, that uh, she's always in need of the help of the bishop, and the bishop always helps her. You will also find that um, she has an ill mother whom she's taking after, looking after, all right? And, uh, Person called her as a nimcompoop. You find that in the uh, your text, so I will not be spelling it out as such. So a nimcompoop is a person who is a, a very stupid person who acts very foolishly. All right. So here, person calls her an idiot. Now, why did she call that? You need to prove that. If you say that uh, Mary is a uh, is a stupid girl. All right. Now, how can we learn the famous? the soup is boiling uh, scene, all right? See, supposing your parents ask you to cook rice, all right? So you go and uh, you did not do anything, your parent, let's say your mother went and make the fire, all right? Let's say you put the pot on the fire, but you tell your mother that the, um, the rice is boiling, all right? See, that is how uh, Mary was uh, behaving. But madam, the soup is boiling, you know? Then lift it out, person would scold in that way. Or for that matter, but madam, you yourself, but madam, you yourself have made the fire. The soup is not boiling enough. Madam was the one who made the fire. See, she is, she is the servant, but she's not doing the work. Instead, she's telling the mistress or person what is happening, you know? So we can say that she is a very stupid person. So those are some of the main characters. The rest we would not be discussing today. Now let's take a look at the theme of the play. Now the theme of the play is love and kindness. Love and kindness can change a man. 
rather than violence, all right? Love and kindness can change a man rather than violence. So let's say you have written that as your theme and now you need to prove how that is the theme, all right? In your answers, you need to prove it. So remember, you need to substantiate it or you need to support it with very good examples. So take the example of the convict. He was being imprisoned for 10 years for stealing food, all right? 10 years for stealing food. But did that make him stop being a thief? All right. He was given a lot of uh, ill treatment, beaten up like anything as his punishment. But did that make him stop uh, becoming a thief? You need to answer those questions. All right. And so see, uh, punishment was rewarded with violence, but the convict did not change at all. In fact, he pointed out that I was a man, but now I'm a beast. They took away my name, and now I'm only a number. You know, so he was reduced to a very inhuman animal-like person. Even Persom called him as uh, that beast, all right, that beast with the hungry eyes and so on. See, so that was his condition. So you need to uh, prove that, yes, he was a victim of circumstance. Yes, love and kindness can change a person instead of violence. Now, how did that happen? Take the example of the bishop's kindness. He, the bishop, was not threatened at all when the convict entered and threatened him. He said, why don't you sit down and here's the meal, all these things were being offered. He was given a bed to sleep on and he knew that the convict was admiring, all right, the convict was admiring the silver candlesticks there, but he did not put it aside, all right? So see, that, that is uh, showing kindness. Then another point here is he listened to the convict so that he would understand him. And that way he also helped him understand. The convict said that, I don't know why, but with you, I am thinking more like a man. See, with kindness, he is changing. In other words, the bishop has awakened his conscience, all right? He started to feel guilty when he took the candlesticks. But, and that's why he apologized a lot when he, it, he was brought back to the bishop, you know? So see, slowly, a man is nothing without his conscience. If he cannot think this is right and this is wrong, a man is nothing. So he started to think what is right, that he shouldn't be doing this, and so on. So in the end, we find that he even asked before he was saying that I don't believe in religion, but in the end, he even asked the bishop to pray for him so that he would not turn into a thief again, so that he would turn into a completely new person. So that is how the bishop has changed, brought about a change to the convict's life. So that is how we can say that this play is all about um, love and kindness can conquer or uh, are much better than violence all right, so that is our theme of the drama or play here. Now, the next thing that you need to look at is irony. You have an exercise there in your text which talks about irony. So what is an irony? An irony is a literary device, all right, which means it is a tool, all right? It is a tool to write. Now, if you want to, um, um, let's say you want to make a table, what do you need? You need a hammer, you need nails and so on. Those are the tools to make that table. So in order to write, what are the tools that you need? You need all these kinds of uh, poetic devices. So irony here is a poetic device in, and we have a lot of ironies in our play. Now, uh, the irony that you will find are three kinds of ironies in our play. That is dramatic irony, all right, situational irony, and verbal irony. Um, dramatic irony is when both the verbal and the situational happens, okay? So I'm going to explain what is verbal irony. When a miscommunication happens, all right, regarding certain facts, that is a verbal irony. When uh, something, in fact, th this can happen between the characters. Let's take the example of um, verbal and situational irony. Now, the police were very happy when they caught the convict with the uh, silver candlesticks, and they were sure that they would put away the convict into back to prison. But what happened? The bishop said that, no, he's my friend. 
So see, verbal and situational irony. And when the convict entered the, in the first scene, when the convict entered and threatened the bishop, the bishop simply sat still and said, if you make, uh, in fact, the, when the convict said that, I'm going to kill you if you made a sound, the bishop did not uh, jump out of his seat, but he simply said, I am only reading. I'm not going to do you any harm. See? So these are the irony that you find. Then, um, when, the, then when the convict pointed out that he has nothing to lose anymore, he does not care about anything else, the bishop said that you have your soul to lose. All right? You cannot say that I don't have anything to lose anymore. All right? Everything is uh, the end. When the convict felt in that kind of a situation, the, the bishop cleverly pointed out that you have your soul to lose. All right? So that is also a verbal irony. You will find plenty. Um, the, next thing, the next example here is the bishop. Uh, I've already given you this example when uh, the bishop said that, oh, that's very, ah, you are good, sister, to think of that, referring to the candlesticks, that which can be sold to help another people, another person. So those are the literary device that you will find. And what is the purpose? What does it do to our play? You will find that uh, this creates humor, all right? This creates comedy. Okay, so when you read it, you will find that these, uh, these situations are very funny. It creates, it lightens up the play to a great extent. So that's what they do. And now in your exercise, there are also some examples there. And uh, I hope this lesson will be able to help you write your answers better. And I hope that this lesson would be able to help you want to read your text more, which is the whole purpose. See, education is, the purpose of education is for you to become an independent learner. In other words, learn how to do your own self-study. So those are some of the tips that I have given just now. I hope you will be able to follow it. And with that, we have come to the end of this class. Thank you all very much.